Welcome back to Spectacle Island for episode three with me, Mr. Sealy P. I decided at 8.02 in the morning uh, to drive the harvester up rather than get a loader. This runs at 26 miles an hour, so you know it's absolutely fine, no problem at all. So, in the usual Mr. Silly P debacle style, the whole um, kind of farce type, <laughs> like a television program with all the farce, you know, you can imagine what it's like. Uh, this is my second time of doing it. It's not the video part of it, but the, the commentary. I, I swear there's paranormal activity going on in my household. Um, so, Saturday morning, I got up nice and early because Saturday afternoon, I was going off to see my brother. We haven't seen him for months and months and months. The lockdown sort of thing's lifting. We can go out to bars and pubs and that kind of stuff again. So we were going to go to my brother's. I was going to see my niece, nieces and nephew, and then go out with my sister-in-law my brother. And oh, Fantastic, great. So I got up nice and early, did my video, did the recording, came to edit, did the uh, intro, and it was just a flat line on the recording. I thought, what? That's weird. Um, somehow the mute button on my headset had been clicked to on. Don't understand how. So anyway, the whole video, 49 minutes or so, no sound whatsoever apart from the vehicles and stuff, so I'm having to go over and do this later on. So there we go. That's why no video posted Saturday. But I was busy last night, well I say last night, in game last night, look over to the right, I decided having cleared field one, I would keep hold of the Rotner and I would clear field two and then clear field three and field four which I did so field one you saw me do in the last episode field two was okay it was as it got started to get dark it got a little bit harder but what I've done is got all the stuff off the field so off the field and using the rotten I was pulling it all down and putting it into piles not here on the field then using the mill loader grabbing those piles and then taking them off the field and putting them in sort of neat-ish stacks. Um, and with the wheel loader, what I do is, my stacks are not that neat when I actually um, do my cutting and line them all up. So I use the wheel loader, push and shove a little bit to tidy the piles up. Then they're great to pick up with the mill loader and off they go off the side of the field. Uh, finding the stumps was the same as it was in field one. I think I've got them all when I get to ploughing. Only time will tell at that point. So, we shall see. So, one, done, two, done. Field three and four, three was a big proposition because I didn't realise how big a field that was. By the time I got to that field, it was starting to get dark. I did three first, then I did four, which probably wasn't the best way around of doing it. Because when I got to field four, it was pretty much dark. So, so when it came to doing the stumps, I, I, I pretty much almost ploughed the entire field using the stump grinder thing, you know. And I know I've missed stuff. I absolutely I've missed stuff. What I also did was use the stump grinder to completely remove the smaller trees that only give you like one spindly sort of bit of lumber. Um, and what I did then was cut down all the trees that either gave me two sections or more. Now the other thing I also did was swapped it, well I was doing eight metre cuts in the uh, last episode, but on the back of the International they overhung quite a lot. So when I switched over to do field two, three and four, I brought that down to seven metre cuts so they're a little bit shorter. Am I going to be taking these all over to the um, barge in this episode? No, they are going to be moved, it will all be shifted at some point, um, but I'm not going to be doing it now. What I am going to be doing, so I can get on with doing some ploughing, I'm going to be um, just tidying the piles up and then moving things over. Oh yeah, that reminds me, while I was here, um, the equipment I talked about in the first episode, we've got our high density baler, 6,000 litre bales, challenger version of, and then we've got the mowers pack from the Coverland and Vicon DLC in the Coverland pattern and I think I went for yeah I'm pretty sure on the back of that it's got the uh, wind rower capability so a few things to get done uh, and like I say all, all, the whole thing the thing now is as I'm going doing putting this over the top 
um, doing the, the voiceover on top is remembering all what I spoke about the first time. You know, you kind of chat. Uh, you know, I'm like when I do my videos, I get talking and I'm chatting about what's going on and what I've been doing, and it all kind of flows because it's fresh in my head. But obviously now I'm coming back thinking, what did I talk about? This, what was I saying at this bit? So I'm trying to remember all the things I was talking about. Next job after doing those bits is clearing the yard up. Now we did all the trees and stuff, but all the stuff that Jim's left behind for us, that you, you can clean up and you can put in piles, you can store away, you can do whatever you want with it. Someone suggested using the landscaping tool and just landscaping over the top of it, which will remove it. The other thing as well is you've got the, um, the rollers that take things back to their, to, you know, original state, you could use those. And I think you can even go over it with a cultivator, I think, normally. A small cultivator will get rid of it. So what I'm going to do later, when we get to it, I'm going to grab the wheel loader with the bucket. We're going to come round and we're going to see what all the different piles are, because I'm, we've got there's a bit of straw, straw, we've got a bit of hay knocking about, there's pig food, as we can see here. There's silage at one point, there's manure piles, um, there's, I think there's wheat in uh, one of the piles, I think the first time we looked at was wheat. So what we can put into silos, we will. What we can't, we're going to put into piles. And, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. We'll, we'll try and get as many jobs done as we can. Um, the thing about it being when I initially recorded this on Saturday morning, I was kind of against the wire because I had a deadline for the time we were supposed to be leaving to head off to my brother's. It lives a little while away. It takes a little while to get there. Um, that's why I kind of got up early. And I and I was saying in the video about how look, you know, this may be slightly shorter. You know what I'm like. It's not going to be, is it? It's going to be three or four minutes shorter, if anything. But I was trying to get as much done in that time as possible. So anyway, I'm going to put the harvester in this shed because it's bigger, taller, more space. It's up here now. It's ready to go whenever we need it. And then we'll go back and I think we'll get on with the mill loader. No, Terra Track. Grab the Terra Track because what we can do is, is that, like I said before, the jigsaw puzzle thing, isn't it? Of doing um, things in the, the right order. And when I was a postman, it was what we used to call dead walking. If you had a delivery where you were doing parts of delivery, if you had to dead walk back past houses you'd already done, you were kind of wasting time. So you always tried to work out your delivery route to avoid backtracking and going past bits you've already done before. And it's that same kind of principle, like a time and motion study really, isn't it? That if I'm going to go back down, get the mill loader, do some work, if I'm walking past the terror track, which I'm going to need later anyway, might as well grab it now. Do you know? So what I'm going to do is grab the plough, it does look quite open across there now, but you can see what I mean about the snake and around in the field. Yeah, we'll grab the plough. This all looks a bit open. I think I'm going to have to put some more placeables up here and have a thing as we move forward. I suppose as we need more machinery and things like that, if we get any more harvesters or anything, we might put some more sheds up. And yeah, what I'll do is I'll plough field one. I'll need to move the logs off field two, then plough that. And then it will be the same process, roll over, logs off of field three. Actually, no, I think field three, the bigger field, I'm pretty sure when I did the login last night, I um, I keep saying last night, I mean like last night in game, not last night in the real world. I'm pretty sure I pulled those all off the field when I was doing the login. Whereas field four, by the time I got to that, it was pitch black. I did some off of the field, but that one's going to be the stumps. That's going to be the hardest thing to sort out. So, yeah, we'll get a field one ploughed. That was my initial goal, in all honesty. At the end of the last episode was get field one cleared, get the plough onto field one, get field one ploughed, get it fertilised, get it planted with something, and then get going. Because it just made more sense. And then I thought, well, you know, while I've got the rotner, I might as well, you know, I'd... I'd what am I stuck on? Oh yeah, that's what. On the hedge. <laughs> stuck on the hedge. So I thought, I, I'd finished doing my recording for the day, uh, had my dinner, sat down to watch TV. I started watching whatever I was watching, and I, I got really bored, and I was watching the particular episode and thought, oh, you know, I could go back out and do some more work, get some stuff done. That was Friday evening, so I thought what I'll do is make a start. Hang on a minute. 
Oh, that's where I'm... Yeah. Mm. That stump grinder is great, and it does plough as well. It's got a little flap that comes down, which does that thing, deletes fields, returns them back to their original state and that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure when I started ploughing, or when I was trying to get rid of the stumps, I knocked that on by accident. So there's a couple of patches I'm going to have to um, put this on create fields and just redo it. So yeah, so anyway, so I got bored. What I was watching, I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know, you know. I might as well make a start that way. I'm ahead of the game for tomorrow morning so I can get everything done, recorded, edited, posted, and then we can head off to my brother's. Um, so I came out and then ended up, I thought, well, what I'll do is just cut more trees down. So I spent quite a bit of time. It did take a while, I'll be honest. Are we missing bits? So yeah, um, while we're doing this, or I'm doing this bit, um, I will also say that over the weekend I haven't been on, I haven't been on my comments, I haven't been on anything for the, the first two episodes of this, so apologies if you haven't had a response or reply to a question or a comment, or um, it was that kind of, you know what, we haven't really seen other people, you know, yes we went up to Lake District for a week and we were kind of very insular, did a bit of walking, that kind of thing. And I think what was lovely over the weekend, I didn't realise how much I missed it, not just going out to a pub or a bar or a restaurant, was whilst we've been at home here and our kids are kind of, they're all grown up, you know. Celie G's 18 in June. You know, she's got three more days of A-level exams and then she's done. Um, she's heading off to university though. Hopefully, if she gets the grade she needs, she's been in provisional acceptance to five universities she wants to go and study criminal psychology that blew our minds I'll be honest with you none of our, none of our, none of our other kids have gone to university they, they didn't want to I, I'm, I'm, I probably have said this before in other videos it was that kind of thing of I, I never got the opportunity to when I was growing up it was a case of finish school you go to work you know um my family, my dad, it was never a thing, you know. Um, and I always said with our kids, if they come to us saying they want to go to university, if they want to go to then we'll work out how that's going to happen. And none of them did. None of my other kids wanted to. They just, you know... So I was just clearing that little bit there. I've just quickly tapped uh, L1 triangle, put a loud crate fields on, and then tap it back off again. So, yeah, so when she came to us and said, yeah, I want to go to uni, we were a bit wow okay of all of our kids she was one i didn't expect her to want to do it um i've gone i've gone off on a sidetrack again haven't i about silly g and university oh yeah about the kids growing up yeah so you know, through all the lockdown stuff and you'd have your, your saturday night quiz nights and we'd have the family nights and games nights and you know, it was great and they're all adults and you can have an adult conversation and that kind of thing but what was really really nice was going out to a to a bar a pub, having dinner with my brother and my sister-in-law, sitting chatting to other adults, but also being surrounded by that hubbub, you know, that all the, the noise of the bar and the pub and people chatting and laughing and I honestly didn't realise how much I'd missed that. It's, it's odd, isn't it? Not that I go out all the time or anything like that, but I really didn't realise how much I'd missed that. Because when we were in the Lake District, the pubs and bars weren't open, you could eat outside but you didn't get that same atmosphere. It was a more summary kind of feel to it. Whereas this, you know, it felt like there was some semblance of normality coming back, if you know what I mean. Which is, you know, it's what you need. So, uh, so yeah, it's all, it's all good. Uh, what I will do is finish this off. I won't subject you to uh, me watching me do the entirety of the rest of the field. And I'll um, see you in a minute. And what we'll do is we'll clear the logs off a of field two. Uh, I need to tidy up the logs in the other piles on three and four. When those are done, we need to start cleaning up the yard. Um, I honestly don't know how that's going to go because, like I say, we haven't got storage for everything. I am considering maybe putting a multi-fruit silo, just a small extension next to the one we've got so certain things we we could store i'm pretty sure the silo up there isn't i don't think it's a multi-fruit anyway 
We'll check. So, that's the plan. Field two, as you can see, plows over there. I've, I've done two or three, well, two rounds. I'm on the third round uh, with the plow, and I got to a point where I was getting close to the piles of logs. So as you can see, it's difficult to see when they're in amongst all the withered crops and stuff, but I try to neaten the piles up as much as I can. That just makes it easier for using the mill loader. Um, and also when you come to load up onto the back of the International or any vehicle, the neater the poles are, the easier that becomes. You can tidy the stacks up when they're on the back of a lorry. Of course you can, you know. You can push them with various different things or, you know, or you might just be one of those people that are incredibly professional with the loading. So, I don't know, like I say, because I haven't been into my comments for the last couple of days, two, you know, two days, it may well be that people are disgusted and annoyed with me for using this and using tension straps not using the crane properly but there will be as many people that know exactly what I mean about the crane physics and they don't always work and sometimes stuff just goes all over the place and like I said in, in the early episode episode one or even episode two or both why, why make life hard for yourself you know I, I get there's an element of people want to go for a more realistic approach and that's absolutely great to a degree and if and if the physics of it all worked perfectly absolutely you know we'll do it in a heartbeat um, we had, what was that? Oh, what was it called? The Quadro Pack. Quadro Pack V. I was never sure if it was a V or a 5. And it was that little bale stacker that put bales in stacks of 4. Now I know we have the Arcusin 4 stack, but weirdly that only does stacks of 3. But this one it was, was it a Black Sheet Modding Mod? On FS17. And it's stacked in 4s. So I would go around the field, stacking in 4s, and then using the bale grabs i would manually load onto uh, bale trailers in stacks of four so it was a nice combination between not auto loading you were doing your stacks but then manually loading those stacks of four and i i really enjoyed doing that there was an, a real semblance of realism and because it worked because the physics worked well because the bales didn't go all over the place i was really happy doing that and i think it's one of the things i'm i don't know i'm really hoping for fs22 I know there will still be that debate about logging. You know, people doing the whole world, logging's not part of farming, blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting into all of that. I know, you know, as many people believe it is, as, as this and that kind of thing. It's one of those things that will continue on. But um, I suppose to code it, to get it to work right, I'm, like I said, I'm not a coder, I'm not a modder, I'm not, you know, it must be incredibly hard. You've got a lot of different things all happening at the same time. You've got a lot of independently moving parts. All the separate logs are all, you know, they're all jostling for position. When they're laying flat, they're fine. You grab them and bunch them up. And then, you know, I can understand why. I think if the, the physics for those kind of things improve in FS22, then using a lot of these, like the forwarders and all those kind of things, I think people would do more. I think the problem is there's that um, a huge amount of frustration when you're trying to do something and you desperately want to, you know. And with practice, it gets easier and it gets better. And, you know, absolutely it does. But, um, yeah, it would be nice to, uh, to just to get it to work a little bit easier, I think. That's just my own personal opinion. I'm swinging them around, in case anyone's wondering, um, because you've got thick, thin, thin, thick. And when you cut them all, they'll always go thick, thin, or whichever way around you've got them, um, to the end of the tree, which is the, the narrowest part. So when you're piling up in stacks, and the same as if you put them on a trailer, I will always try to do one load one way, one load the next, so it tries to keep the load level as it goes. No different to stacking books in a pile or anything like that. The spines of the books are always thick at the edges of the books, and as the pile goes up, I mean, that's from being at school, when you're stacking exercise books. Um, my dad always taught me, because he worked in the print industry, they were called turns. So the, the magazines on the, on the pallet stackers would do turns. So many books one way, so many books the other way, and it keeps the pallet stack neat and tidy and level. So um, it's just things you do. So, wheel loader. I am going to just push that one log in because when I come to seed or fertil fertilizer, won't be so bad, but seeding, I don't, if I'm just over the edge a little bit, I don't want to be clipping logs and dragging piles. And 
this is the same thing again. I, I again, I'll use what I've, I've tried to use different bits of machinery. In all honesty, for doing this, I know this is another one. This log fork that came as part of the six two two pack, because it's got the tension strap. I, I love it. I think it's brilliant. And I know I said before, it's the width I try to go for because a lot of the log forks are just a prong or a double prong with a single or you know. And they're quite narrow, so on long logs you get a lot of twist. Whereas the wider the log fork is, um, it grabs it much further along, it's a bit more st stable. That's something I was going to say about this wheel loader. It's fantastic and I love it, but when you get up to a bit of speed, it, it turns very quickly. It's very easy to lose control of, I have noticed. So, field three, the bigger of the fields. Same with this one, like I said, I deleted, I got rid of all of the, say deleted, mulched, removed all of the really small trees and kept the um, large ones. And this is all I do for my stacks when they're off the field and they're untidy. It's just a bit of shoving, you know, shove the pile at this from the side. So if there's any that are at an angle, it should line them all up fairly neatly. Then from either end, tidy the ends up, you know, it won't always necessarily stay like that. And when you come to load, there'll be a little bit of jostling and that kind of thing. But it just gets the stacks a bit tidier for me personally. Now, there may be much more professional ways of doing this. You know, there are different log um, racks and log holders and all the different things you can use for forestry. And that's, again, absolutely fine. Absolutely fantastic. This is just the way I do it. Um, yeah. Do it however you want. <laughs> you know. They, like I said, there will be people that stay well clear and they won't touch forestry or logging at all because of that frustration and that annoyance and you know it's if you don't find it and I, I often find as well on different maps it also depends what map you're on because there's always that kind of thing of um, payment being commensurate to the effort put in some jobs you do seem to require far less effort for a higher payment things like fertilizing jobs when I did Stone Valley once I got a decent fertilizer set up or a couple of fertilizers running if you did a really big field don't get me wrong it still took a while but you get paid 60 grand and you can let it chug away hire a worker bang 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 great when you're doing things like logging and wood chipping unless the map you're on pays out really really well for lumber or really really well for wood chips which some do you do then start to get to that point you think okay i'm hours into doing this logging process and then when you get paid you think well that wasn't worth it i've just done all that work and i could have done x amount of other jobs you know the other way of looking at it from my perspective is it's just it's a different process a different job to do it's something different yes if you just want to come on the game and just make the most amount of money you can then you're going to stick to whichever process on that map pays out the most and just do that over and over and over and over and over. Or you're just going to put in government subsidy signs or, you know, I've said this before. I, for me, it's, it's about trying out different things, you know. So, I'm not quite sure what I was showing at that point. Again, it's what I say because I'm doing the overlay now later. I can't remember what I was talking about. This is the worst stack, definitely the worst pile that I brought off the field. And I had a weird situation with this. All that grass area where I'm pointing now, when I was pulling the logs off the field, rather than pull them off and put them, the, pull them off the field and put them in the grass there, I decided to plough a little bit and put them there because I'd be able to see them. But now I've got to kind of double handle them. I could have just dragged them all off the field. I, I don't know why I didn't. I, it's very strange. But anyway, that's the worst pile on the left. That needs neatening up and tidying up. And this is the worst field because it was pitch black when I came to do this. I know I haven't found all the stumps. In ploughing field one, I haven't found a stump yet. Field two, I hope I don't find any. It's going to be interesting to see how many. I am almost convinced this field I'm on now is I'm going to find the most stumps in. And weirdly is the crop in this field as well. The other ones look withered. And when I started doing this, uh, I thought, I might as well get off the field while I'm doing it. Yeah, I thought straight away, oh, I know there's weeds mixing amongst it and there were trees and stuff, but I thought there was a crop in it. So as I'm going around and I was taking the stumps out and leaving the ploughed lines, I'm thinking, this is such a waste of a crop. But 
It's not. It's not a crop. It is a withered crop. I mean, it is a crop, but it's withered. I, I honestly, it felt more like a normal crop. But again, not too bad. Not too bad. So yeah, for just get all these bits done, then I can get the ploughing done. Then we can get onto our planting now. And the initial plan was field one. I was going to do wheat or barley um, because for me, if I'm going to do all of the animals. The easiest to start with is chickens, because they only require wheat or barley. Um, unless you're on a map where they require water as well. I'm trying to get me started on that. But, uh, yeah, so they're fa fairly straightforward. You can get them going, you can get your eggs going, and you, know, you can start making a bit of money doing it that way. Then sheep, or sheep, then chickens, which is the other way around. Because with sheep, being that they get fed grass or hay, you don't have to feed them hay, you just feed them grass. You don't have to tether, you don't have to do anything, um, and water. And then you start getting wool. So they're actually fairly straightforward to get cracking with almost immediately. And I've got grass all the way around the sides of the fields. I'm not going to be ploughing out and extending these fields because of the grass around them. I can cut that and I can get sheep going almost straight away. So that was the plan for the fields. And like I say, this doing fields two, three and four wasn't my intention to start off with. I was going to get some animals going, then do some of this off screen, and it kind of just the way it happened, really. Oh, yeah, the field thing. That's what I was talking about. It is withered. I, I was convinced it was a crop in there. So, I, I don't know. Very peculiar, but actually, I haven't even checked to see if they need liming yet. I might need to lime first and then fertilize, but anyway. We'll get on to that. But it just stands so tall as well. That's another thing I, why I, I don't think I got all the stumps. I'm sure there are loads more. But not to worry. It's all good fun. Yeah, so as I was saying, that's the plan with the animals. I was just going to do field one. So they're moving on to obviously cows and pigs are a little more... I say they're a little bit more tricky. They don't have to be. It depends how you want to go about it. If you want to go down the route of saying, I'm going to buy in my TMR, you know, you might be a, a livestock farmer that doesn't have arable fields. You might be a livestock farmer that doesn't want to buy in bales. You don't want to mix feed yourself. or You might want to buy it already made. Get your TMR nice and cheap in. Done. That's entirely up to you. I've always tried to with TMR. I'm trying to think, did I... No, I still made it on Washo. On Washo I was making it, but they, they had a really good price for selling it. So all my surplus I was selling. That's right, I'm thinking I was buying it. I wasn't, I was selling it on there. I still like to make my TMR using bales or loose product, but you still need to have your hay, your straw, and your silage, or just hay and silage. So that's a bit of a process. And then the same thing with pigs. You can buy your pig food. Of course you can. But if you want to go down the route of feeding the pigs yourself, then you've got all the different crops you need to grow to feed your pigs. I've never found that to be the most cost-effective way. If you've watched any of my Let's Plays and stuff, what I generally try to do is pick up harvest contracts. And if I'm running pigs on that map, I will use the um, surplus left over at the end of a harvest contract to feed my pigs. So in essence, you're getting free pig food, in a way. So yeah, there's all different ways of doing it, but like I say, chickens and sheep, they're pretty much the quick and easy route to get into it, which is what I'll probably do on here. Oh, that's the third load of logs off of field three. I, uh, I did say that, did I say there was some more? I can't remember. Again, I'm getting myself confused with what I said the first time round. As I'm doing this, bits are flashing into my mind, and I'm thinking, have I mentioned that already? Have I not mentioned that? What was I talking about at this point? <laughs> It's typical. Why, what baffles me, and why I said about paranormal activity, is on the um, the, c the cable that run cable the you know, that runs from my headset and plugs into my controller. It's got the little block on it with a mute switch. Now that mute switch is a proper click. It's not. It doesn't like just fall into place. It has to be clicked. Now I've been recording and editing videos with this headset or one exactly the same as this headset for the last two years, I didn't, yeah. I've had the odd recording gaff here and there where I haven't plugged in the headset or, you know, silly things like that. I have never, 
ever muted it on the cable. Never needed to, never wanted to, never felt the need, never have. I don't understand how or what point that got muted. Because again, it's that sort of thing that when I came to record, I, I never would have thought to check it. Why would I? Because it's not something I ever touch. So yeah, all very weird, but it's just, it's life, isn't it? It happens, and you just have to make the best of it. So what I'm going to do now is, they're all tidy, I'm going to grab the mill loader, get the piles off the fields. I might do a little bit more ploughing. Uh, I'm going to take the wheel loader up to the farmyard, switch over for the bucket, and let's get some clean-up done. I know I've been talking quite a lot, and, you know, again, probably because I, in my head I'm trying to think what was I talking about before, and different things are popping into my head. And obviously, because it's been the weekend, and when I first recorded this, I hadn't been anywhere, and now obviously I have, what I, the, the things I have available to talk about have changed. So, you know. I'll see you in a minute, and let's clear some of this yard. Okay, we have the wheel loader, we have the bucket. I've done a little bit more ploughing here and there, just, just some tidy up stuff. Oh yeah, field two, I finished field two, I'm... Um, one stump. I found a stump. I can't. I was hoping you could be able to see it across the field. You can't. One stump in field two. Uh, field four? About seven or eight. <laughs> told you. I, I told you there'd be more I'd miss on that one. Yeah, it is what it is. So, until I get store, Actually, no, I don't have to worry about storage for the seed and fertiliser because we're going to seed and fertilise. So, yeah, there's, there's a bit of everything. Jim's left a bit of everything all over the place. So, wood chip. Oh yeah, I remember now what I did now. <laughs> See, sometimes when I do, if I do a voiceover, um, I say sometimes, I haven't done it for a long time in all honesty, but when I used to do it, I would voice over as if I was doing it at the time. I found that a bit disingenuous because you do that kind of, you feign surprise of, oh, look what's just happened. Well, you know that's just happened because you've already recorded it and you're editing, you know, I made a real gaffe here. But that's tipping, look, but it's not. I thought the, the silo was taking the wood chips. Mm, no. <laughs> so, unfortunately, no. I made a bit of a mess here. So, at some point later, I think I'm going to have to lease probably that um, conveyor belt, the pickup conveyor, and just get that off there. It's, I think I can still tip other stuff into it. It just looks a bit unsightly. Now, so as far as the additional crop types go, because I'm pretty sure still that that's a, a regular silo, I'm just going to put in piles nice and neat to the side. Oh, yeah, that was what I was checking. It does say I've got... That's chaff, isn't it? Is it wood chip? No, wood chip's the next one over, isn't it? Forage. Yeah, so there's nowhere to store it. Although it's saying I've got silage there. Where's that? Oh, there's another silo, isn't there? Over at um, the biogas plant. So potentially... Yeah, because there's slurry storage there as well. Not slurry, digestate. Maybe it's over on that one. I haven't checked that other silo out. I didn't even check that out on my first. Like I mentioned it, but didn't look to see what it takes or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is the, the things over and above what the silo will take, I'm just going to put in a pile. But I'm going to put them in neat piles. I'm tied in the yard. I'm going to put them in neat piles. Then we'll sort out what we're going to do with them. Whether it be I take the wood chips and sell them or whatever I decide to do with them. The stuff here on the floor, I, I honestly know, I can't remember what it all was. Oh, that, that's wheat there. Wheat can definitely... I was trying to get to the wood chips, but it doesn't matter. The wheat can go into the silo, so we can tidy that up straight away. Round to the side. I mean, there, there is stuff everywhere, and there's a there's a bit of everything as far as I can tell. But like, as I was saying, there's a bit of seed, there's a bit of fertiliser. If I'm going to be seeding anyway, I can use that. I'll just pick it up and I'll, I'll put it in a neat pile to one side, but I don't have to worry about storing it. That will go straight into the seeder. 
I'm trying to think now. Does my seed does seed and fertilize? I can't remember. I just cannot get those wood chips now. It's going to have to be a, a, a wheel loader. Now over here, we've got. Oh yeah, this was the weird one. This threw me. We've got silage here, and if I do this, I can. No, that's a silo. I don't know. I was going to say you can buy silage. That's a silo. But where is that? Where's the putting for that? The, oh, that's right. The pipe work that runs from here. That's what made me think. Does that connect to the other silo? It's a long pipe. I'll be honest with you. Um, because the pipe comes out the back of there, and that actually goes off towards the other, but goes to the biogas plant. So potentially. I'm going to have to go over at some point and we'll check out what the other silo holds because that all runs right into here. It's funny saying about that being a long pipe. Talking to my brother at the weekend, we were talking about where when we were out having dinner. Oh, I had a, a beer by a brewery called Delirium and there was a Red Berries one and there was one that was like a coffee, not a porter as such. And my brother bro said he'd be, they went to Bruges, him and his wife went to Bruges. And the beers and stuff, they did the brewery tours and all sorts of stuff there, did a the beer tasting thing or whatever. Delirium was one of the ones that they tried. Now, the weird thing is they've got a tap room and bar and stuff where you go and you do all the beer tasting and stuff like that. But the actual brewery itself is about three miles away on an industrial stay. So it's not like a really fancy old style brewery. It's a fairly modern one on just a normal industrial estate, but it's three miles away. To avoid transportation backwards and forwards, they installed a three mile pipeline that runs from the brewery to the bar and tap room. And it goes under the local railway, under a couple of roads, and also three miles. So my first question was, how do they keep it clean? And my brother said, that's the first thing I asked. And they said, because it's, it's the beers in it, as long as there's always beer in the pipeline, it kind of self-cleans. It doesn't need anything in it. It's only if it runs dry that things can, you know... Seeing that pipeline just suddenly reminded me of that conversation, which is absolutely bizarre. But anyway, so, yeah. Back to what I'm doing. The, um, I'm asked when I first went along the front of the trough, because in your head, normally what gets left behind by the cows is silage in the feed areas i thought it was going to be silage so we've got some tail mix ration that'll go to one side i did then wonder if what was inside was also tail mix ration that's manure so what we're going to do is clear the manure out now there's a little bit of tail mix ration that's not enough to say right let's get cows now because that's not even going to last one cow you know we need to have more um, so what we'll do, we'll tie, tie the manure up. I'm sure we've got manure here and we've got a load of manure scattered around in the pig pen and in the, the um, manure bunker for the pigs as well, which is great. I'm sure there's a bit of hay by the sheep, a bit of straw by the pigs. There's, you know, like I say, there's a bit of everything all over the place. I want to get this all neat and tidy before we start our adventure into livestock. I'm also racking my brain trying to think of some processes, some things I haven't done for a little while that I want to have a crack at. And I'm also trying to think of different mods, and like I said before, of things that, that I missed, you know? Stuff that came out in the mod hub that the, the Let's Player was on at the time, it didn't really suit, or... It's often difficult. If a mod comes out, you think, that's brilliant trying to lever it into the let's play you're running at the time especially when i'm doing a storyline one can be really hard you know and the few times i have done you know, people going really you know you've only put that in there because it's a new mod and it, well yeah because it's great and i want to try it out and i want to use it you know i still there's that huge part of me that's like an excitable child you know something new comes out and you think i want to try that and then you think oh, i'll use it on my next let's play but it, it doesn't always quite fit Whereas I think on this one, like I've said, this is just going to be, yeah, I'll have a look. And if it's in the mod, I'm going to think, oh, I haven't used that. Well, that was cool. I remember that coming out. I'm just, yeah, well, let's have a crack with it. Let's see what it is. But I'm just racking my brains trying to think of some of the things. That's what I did in Rasfet when I tried to use that old, the older um, cotton harvesting gear. 
I hadn't really used it, and I thought, yep, yeah, we'll have a crack with that. Let's, you know, let's do that. So I don't know. I think one of the areas that has really kind of suffered, I think I mentioned it on my Rasset videos, is um, the sugarcane stuff. There's, we've got some sugarcane trailers, and I think we've got a couple of extra sugarcane planters, but we never got anything new in the sugarcane harvesting. I know when um, we got Eureka Farms and when TNT had originally done it and we had that one that had the crazy wide pickup and that kind of thing. But in essence, it was the, the, the standard one. It had just been amended in the XML files. So yeah, I think that's one area we haven't really had a lot. And it was something that when uh, they announced FS22 and they were talking about new machine categories and new categories and that kind of thing, I did wonder, I was like, well, if they are going to do new crops, which they said they are, then technically they're going to have new have to have new machinery for those crops. We have got a hay loft as well. I meant to say that. So the straw and the hay, if there's any hay, we're going to stick in. Um, you know what suddenly dawned on me as well is here we've got more. Is that wheat or barley? It's too light to be barley. More wheat. And uh, I've just put a load in the silo, which means we do have some already, so we could get chickens immediately. And hopefully, if we plant field one quickly with wheat or barley, by the time they run out of what Jim's already given us, we should have some new grown and ready to use. I'll put it in the silo for the time being, but yeah, we'll stick it, stick it to one side. So yeah, the whole FS22 thing is that kind of you know, what, what are the new categories going to be? What, what new sorts of machinery, what things are we going to get? And they did say that based upon, uh, when, I re read, when I read their podcast, when I listened to the podcast, and they were saying about, they'd listened to um, viewers and modders and stuff like that, and there was a particular category that people have been asking for. And I was racking my brains. I was like, I, I, can't, I can't think, what could that be? So anyway, yeah, don't know. I'm, I don't know if anything's come out on last week, any new stuff about FS22, I don't think so. What I am going to do... Uh, I suppose what I could have done... I could check the silo with the bucket, couldn't I? So what we got here, this has got to be pig food, hasn't it? And inside... inside at the pig pen, it looks to be a mixture. Can't for the life of me remember what I was checking for in this menu. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? Oh no. I'm thinking, what what was I doing at that point? Anyway, yeah, inside it says a mixture of manure and pig food. Again, pig food I can't store at the moment, so I'll just put that in a pile to one side. Um, we'll tidy up. What's left to do? In front of the sheep pen, which I think is going to be hay. Let's check this. I didn't. I didn't. Um, honestly, couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. So standard. Standard silo. So that's what I said about maybe putting a multi-fruit silo. There's a bit of space around it. Hopefully, I won't get a thing come up saying, you know, collision with another object or anything like that. So. I don't know whether I would or not. Could just put another side up somewhere else, but it makes sense to have it there. So yeah, um, I was just about to say that. Apologies if it's if it's been a little bit boring. I've got I've got a few bits done. Sorted out those fields off screen. Moved the logs, the lumber. Done a bit of ploughing. The yard needs tidying before I. I just for my own sanity, it's that kind of, you know, if I'm going to start bringing animals up, if I want to start doing chickens, if I want to get the sheep underway, um, I don't want to be going around with all the stuff all over the floor, I want to clean it up. And it was one of the things that, um, when I spoke to Jim originally about the map, and said about it, and I said, when you clear up the yard, when you cut the trees down, does all that go? And he said, no, no, I've left that on there on purpose, so you've got a bit of stuff to start with, and it gives you an, an extra kind of job to do. Um, so even if you decide I'm going to cut down all the trees in the yard using that one post, I'm going to cut down all the trees in the field to one post, there's still a few jobs around the yard that do need to be done. Now again, my OCD at this point, I'm like, well, that's 
grass, which I've now put in there, which is now chaff. I could leave it. Absolutely, I could leave it. There's no reason at all. It's chaff. It's in the silage clamp. No problem. But it's that, well, it needs to be a bit tidier. It needs to be a bit more level. I could start compacting it. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. But yeah. We are getting there. I mean, we're only on right, episode 3, aren't we? It's not, you know... If we were on episode 9 or 10 and we haven't done anything, I can understand it. But we are, yeah, we've got a fair bit done. I'm glad I did all that forestry, all that, all that clearing overnight. Because I do want to sell that lumber. I am, I'm really curious. I want to take all of that lumber and put it on the barge and see just how much is there. Yeah, it'll still be the same. It looks like there's loads. I'm going to load up that barge and it won't look like there's hardly anything on it. But it'll be a nice payout again. I could have just, like I say, cut that post. They could have all been removed from the field and I could have just got on with doing the farming side of things. But there's there's money sitting there. There's money in that lumber. Um, the first load I took, I made 80 grand. So if I make anything over 80 grand on whatever I've just done on field two, three and four, that's, that's all money in the bank. That all helps us with... Because the other thing that dawned on me is I haven't bought... Whilst I, did, I picked a selection of things to buy, no difference if you start a map with the start equipment, you know, what have, what have I got? And often you've got, you might have a smaller harvester, you might have a tractor or two, you might have a plough, a seed or a plant or a cultivator, you might on some maps have a fertiliser spreader, not always, you know. So I kind of went through a list of things that I wanted to have, knowing that I was going to start off doing a bit of forestry, so obviously I wanted some forestry gear. The money I brought over with me from um, Rasfet, I spent most of that on buying the mill loader. But I've also realised how much stuff I haven't got <laughs> that, that I didn't buy, that I didn't think as I was going for that mental checklist of all, oh, I need a tractor, I need, oh, I don't need a wheel loader, could have been a telehandler, could have been whatever. I honestly thought there was seed storage, but they're tanks, aren't they? That's liquid. I thought I'd try, but last I'm going to be doing planting, so I'll, I'll put it in the seed. I'll put it into the seed later. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff. Again, I'm, I'm compiling a list now, at the moment mentally, but it does need to be on a bit of paper, of all the things I'm going to need to get. Because once we start moving on to doing stuff for the cows, I'm going to need hay, so I'm going to need a tedder. The mowers I've got do windrow, so I'm not going to need a windrower. I've got a baler. And there's 6,000 litre bales, so I'm going to have to look at combinations of how that's going to work, because that's not something I've done very often before. I might do a combination of baling and loose product. Uh, what else am I going to need? I might need, I haven't got a loading wagon, I haven't got a feed mixer, I haven't, you know, there's a whole load of stuff I'm going to need to get. So by no means is this uh, kind of, you know, like I said, I haven't gone through the comments, that kind of thing of, oh, it's out of order, he started his Let's Play, he's got tons of money, he's got all the equipment, there's nowhere to go. There absolutely is, because I am missing loads of stuff. I've, I've got the um, International, which I can change the back on that from a log back to a flatbed to a loader, uh, like a container, but I don't have a trailer. I haven't got a, you know, a trailer of any capacity of any size. I mean, I need to get a trailer. So, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's loads more to be done. And like I said, there's gold to, to find, and we're going to to sell some gold that'll make a bit of extra money uh, we've got propane and fuel to deliver there's all sorts so anyway I hope you've enjoyed it we're moving forward if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always thanks for watching